You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. The Manitoba Chamber Orchestra's 51st season gets underway tomorrow. And for the first time in two decades, a new executive director will be at the helm. Sean McManus officially stepped into the role on August 14th. And he's joined me in the Classic 107 studio this morning. Hello, Sean. Good morning. Thanks so much for being here. Nice to be here. Uh, You're just about a month into the new gig. How's it been so far? Uh, yeah, it's been great. When you said when you said kicks off tomorrow, I had a little a little jolt there again, <laughs> going, okay, yeah, this really is this really is happening. It it's been a few short weeks, um, but it's been great. Uh, you know, the team at the chamber of is great, and yesterday I got to go sit in on a, on a rehearsal as well. So then I get you know be around the music and around the musicians, and um, yeah, it feels wonderful. Well, we're going to be chatting more about the season, uh, but first, you're no stranger uh, to the music community here in the province. Uh, you came to the MCO after working at Manitoba Music, a hub for all facets of the industry. You climbed your way through the ranks there, ultimately appointed executive director in, in, in 2015. Uh, what made you want to make the move to, to the MCO? Yeah, it's uh, I yeah I, I loved um, working at Manitoba Music, fabulous organization, and again, just you know, so connected to the music community, to to um, creators and performers, and you know, through doing that work, I really learned to what an incredible, I mean, we know here in Winnipeg, here in Manitoba, the incredible riches of the music community. Um, you know, doing that work at Manitoba Music put me in touch with all of these people from outside of the province. And I got to learn really what the reputation is, even from from outside, mm. across the country, around the world. Um, and uh, so, it was, so it was great. And I always talk about, you know, talked about the performers, talked about the culture here of, of music, the culture of supporting music. And so make you know it, was, it really was just for me it was i'd done that for a number of years i've been there for you know over 16 years and it was like uh thinking about something else that i could do and this opportunity came up I felt like being engaged you know moving from that kind of support role supporting presenters supporting musicians into you know really being engaged with with a presenting ensemble being engaged with audiences really thinking about how to connect audiences and and um and musicians in uh in this in this uh, in this age, and um, thinking about how to keep the performing arts kind of relevant in our communities was something that's really exciting to me. Not only the performing arts, but but the classical performing arts. Are, are you excited to live in the classical world once again, full time? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, I, I I love it. I love acoustic music. I love live um, experience, and I love mm-hmm. you know that experience of being um, around musicians. And and I think you know this. This um, this world of concert music and of um, of of performing acoustic concert music, uh, orchestral music for me, um, it's you know it's really interesting. I think to see what's what's living and thriving about that. You know who are the people that are so engaged as performers, so engaged as as composers. And um, what are the partnership opportunities? And so, yeah, I'm, it's, it's, I think it's really exciting. Um, it seems like you keep coming back to connection. And I think this sort of takes us into my, my next question. Um, you, you're, you're a musician yourself. Um, you've been a music teacher. You got an undergraduate degree from Brandon, a master's from York University in music history and ethnomusicology. Ethnomusicology, uh, the study of music in its social and cultural context. Sean, it sounds like you're in a way um, exploring the, the current age through this sort of ethnomusicological spectrum in a way, right? Looking at those social connections? Yeah, I think you might be onto something there. Um, <laughs> Have cert- you thought about it that way before? Well, I mean, certainly when I think about, you know, I think about the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, when I think about music experiences, to me, they are experiences. Mm. And, you know, I love um, the nerdiness of digging into what's going on in a composition. You know, what are the what are the chord changes or what, you know, how are things set? But ultimately for me, um, music is about that experience of audiences, musicians, you know, composers and, and all of it coming together. And that's, that is what excites me um, about it. And, you know, that's the same, whether it's going to see an up and coming hip hop artist at the Goodwill, or it's going to see the MCO at, uh, in the hall, you know, um, mentioning, you know, a, a hip hop show at the Goodwill or the indie scene or, or the pop world or, or the indigenous music scene here in Manitoba. Are, are there elements that you can draw on your past at Manitoba music that you can incorporate into the, the classical world or, or perhaps adapt into the classical world? Well, um, I, I hope so. I think so. Um, I, I really, uh, as much as possible, I actually think, try to think about music without imposing genre on yeah, it yeah, too no, much, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, and, and so I, I really love the idea of, um, 
you know, even even with some of the folks that we have coming in this season where, you know, they're, you know, Awadajan, who's playing tomorrow, where they're a performer, you know, and a conductor, mm-hmm. maybe a performer on multiple instruments, Danuk, who's coming in, who's also a, a composer, and, you know, people that kind of work like that, that just, you know, sort of live and breathe music from, 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 from their own life experience, their own lived experience, pulling together what they see around them. And I think... I think that kind of relationship with music is really um, is really the same across any genres that you're working working in, um, and I think on the audience side too. You know, again, it's we know that that people go to see music for that experience. We know, you know, I've done some work in on the advocacy side of things and looking at you know sort of audience trends, and we know that people want to have a social experience. Mm-hmm. They want to see people. They want to share that with somebody. You know, even if you buy a single ticket and you come to a live event, you're sharing that with the community around you. I think that's the same across across um, across different genres and different communities of music. And so I hope we can bring that. And um, and yeah, I mean, I, I I really like the idea of just uh, trying to build that audience too. Like, who are, are there people who haven't been uh, in the room before for a live orchestra that don't necessarily know the rep? but could love the experience. You know, this has me thinking of, of course, the MCO has created such a wonderful community of regular concert goers, mm-hmm. but also those who come to shows for the for the first time. And I'm thinking back, um, there was an open kind of uh, afternoon rehearsal uh, as part of the last season, and mm-hmm. I, I popped by, um, and it was one that was led, speaking of kind of double threats, by Isla Noski, who was kind of uh, playing as a soloist, but also leading as a concert master. And, and there at the concert were a whole bunch of uh, school students. And just seeing the excitement that they had, like these were, you know, grade 10s, 11s, 12s. And seeing that the engagement that they brought paired with those who had been many, many times before and those who were kind of living in this in-between, there is something electric about that shared experience. And I think that, as you say, no matter which genre you're working in, it is something that is shared amongst all of us, right? That shared connection. Yeah, I think so. And, and um, you know, you bring up the, the, the students and that sort of, uh, you know, that's kind of opportunity to, 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 to connect with, with young musicians and with, you know, musicians outside of, um, outside of the, the regular concerts. And that's a big part of what the MCO does too. And I always knew that that was there, that there was mm-hmm. a bit of outreach, but I've, I've really learned. And, you know, it's one of the things we've been talking about with the team is, you know, I'm learning about everything that they're doing. And I think some of our audience and our community actually, like we could do a better job probably of telling the story about some of that work as well, the outreach work that's happening, the education, the connecting, visiting soloists with the young musicians, the taking a group of of, of musicians and going out, you know. Yeah, letting in, those fiddlers loose, right? Exactly, <laughs> letting the fiddlers loose. And, you know, they, they've been playing around the city in the summer, but we're up, you know, in northern Manitoba in, in, in May. And and I think you're right, those, those connections, when people connect with live musicians, and especially if they're young musicians themselves, mm-hmm. it's really special. Um, if you're just tuning in, my name is Simon Rosnick. I'm chatting with Sean McManus, new executive director of the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. So uh, formal new title um, aside, Sean, uh, you're a proud Winnipegger. Tell us a bit about yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I've, I've been in Winnipeg um, for um, about 16, 17 years. I grew up in Brandon. You know, got my undergrad at, at uh, Brandon University in saxophone. Um, and uh, yeah, I really, for me, I came to music through the high school music programs um, and uh, through playing in band. I, I, I wasn't, you know, a string player. I didn't take piano lessons when I was a kid. So through playing in band, doing theatrical productions, you know, and, and that, it really, it really sucked me in. Um, and, uh, you know, through that ended up, you know, playing saxophone, playing in bands, playing in jazz bands, putting together bands, trying to, you know, one thing that I realized, especially even when I was in Brandon, was doing my undergrad was that I always got sucked into the organizing side <laughs> or, or maybe I gravitated yeah, towards Arts and it. men is calling. Yeah. yeah. And I sort of, I, I started to notice that after a while, you know, I had, I, there's a, there's an educational jazz festival in Brandon, the Brandon Jazz Festival. And I had the, you know, the opportunity to work on that for a couple of years and sort of ran it so that the organizer could have a sabbatical one year. And, and I realized that I was probably spending more time on the organizing of the festival than I was practicing my part for, cause I was playing as well. And I, and I, and I thought, okay, maybe this is a sign. Anyways, I kept, you know, kept playing through that as well. Played in a kind of a folk band. Um, we did folk festival circuit, played the Winnipeg Folk Festival and, and a bunch of others like that. Played throughout the U.S. performing arts um, series and, you know, made a few records. And so really got that experience of, 
you know, you know, it was pretty indie level stuff. We were, yeah, yeah. you know, self promoting and and touring, but but really just playing for all kinds of different audiences, um, especially in the sort of American sort of performing arts world. You know, just playing in you know big halls and then small little community theaters and then and then sort of folk clubs, um, rock clubs, and um, so it's just just a wonderful experience of really learning how music can connect with people, how music can take you to places that you never expected you would be. Um, and it was wonderful. Did did my undergrad at, at York, and um, and you know loved also uh, living and working in Toronto. You yeah. know, just fantastic. that was your masters, right? My, or my yeah, masters yeah, yeah. at York, and yeah, just just you know, fantastic. You know, obviously incredible music communities there and opportunities. So yeah, these days I'm chasing around. I have a young twelve year old cellist in my house. So <laughs> um, you know, really excited to have two cello concerts on the series. This this year. I didn't program that, but we were yeah. happy to see. Um, Desi is is an old friend and was an early teacher of of Mabel's and um, and and Ariel's a favorite as well. So, uh, yeah. So so uh, chasing uh, chasing them around and um, and and my wife, of course, is embedded in the music scene as well as a, as a singer and and working at the Winnipeg Folk Festival. So lots of lots of music in our house. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mabel, our our twelve year old, was was a little worried that this gig would mean less backstage access and less guest lists for their favorite artists, maybe than the old gig. But I said, Hey, you know, you get to come to all these concerts, new and favorite, hang, artists. You know, new favorite yeah. artists, hang out at your dress rehearsals and whatnot. So, um, so, so there, you know, the family's really excited about, about this gig too. Um, well, I think your, uh, Wednesdays are going to be pretty busy, uh, <laughs> moving forward because Wednesday, uh, is typical performance night for the uh, Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. H- how are you feeling about this 51st season? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm excited. I have, um, you know, at this moment, just a lot of trust that uh, the team, you know, knows what they're doing and they're in place. And you know, obviously, Anne is is um, is such a such a you know both calm but also you know exciting you know um, person to have at the helm and to be leading the orchestra and and to have Anne um, Manson, our, our music director in town right now, feels great. And so. You know, I'm. I've got. You know, I've got some stuff to do, but I'm also hoping to just stay out of the way. Yeah. And um and take it in and and observe. Um, try to make sure I don't forget the pieces that I'm supposed to do. And um yeah. So so I'm excited. I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous, but mostly um I'm just uh, continuing to watch and learn and ask questions and and uh, really get a feel for, for how it goes over these next couple of concerts. Um, you mentioned um, Ann Manson, of course, music director of the MCO. Can you speak a little bit more to kind of her involvement, but also um, just working with the MCO musicians and, and the relationship that you're going to kind of continue to foster with them moving forward? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's such an interesting orchestra in that way that, you know, the, the, the makeup of the musicians can change a little bit from, from, from concert to concert. And, uh, you know, but there's also this really core kind of group that have done lots of it. I think that's kind of a superpower of the orchestra. I think that that allows us to be nimble, you know, allows us to, to, to really program different things and, 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 and really be engaged with this community of musicians in, mm-hmm. in Winnipeg that are out there, not just playing with us, but doing, you know, other things, teaching and playing in other ensembles and and getting to know, uh, you know, some of those musicians I know really well, getting to know a few more of them. and. I, you know, for me, the idea of musicians living and working in our community, you know, the idea of a musician living down your block is is so important. And I think the MCO is a big, big part of that. Um, you know, Anne's presence, Anne doesn't live here. So, you know, Anne comes in, um, uh, but but has had, uh, has, you know, has been with the orchestra for, for mm-hmm. a long time too. So has this incredible relationship with the musicians. The musicians love playing for her. She brings this spirit of, of, of of excellence um, and and discovery exploration and just a great a great energy you know um, uh, I you know I think you know really warm and I didn't know her that well before you know this process of of making a decision about whether to to jump in and get involved with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra one of the big moments for me of that was meeting Anne. Oh. And I thought, you know, before that meeting, I thought, well, this, this could be it. This could be, you know, this could make the decision that maybe this, this isn't for me, you know, just because it's such an important relationship, such an important role. And, you know, met with Anne and just immediately, um, uh, uh, immediately, you know, liked her so much as a person, but also found that we were just talking about the same things. Mm-hmm. We were talking about, 
um, the relevance and the energy and the vitality of of the of the orchestra and the audiences and talking about the future really here we are you know with the orchestra that has a 50 year history and has this long tenure um, but immediately we were talking about what's next and that's what I was interested in obviously and and that's what she was interested in as well and um, so yeah so so really exciting and just yeah such a such an incredible um, professional to, to work with and so excited that she's here for the first concert uh, one last question for you Sean you mentioned um kind of finding a shared ground immediately with, with Anne in terms of future casting and, and imagining what the MCO will look like moving into this second half of the first century for the orchestra. Can you share a little bit of that with us now? Well, I mean, it's really early days for me, so it's, it's hard to say. But, you know, I think the things that we're thinking about, the things that we're talking about are, you know, you, you mentioned that the orchestra's created this incredible community, and it really has, and that's one of the things that drew it to me was this, you know, subscriber base, ticket base, audience base that that is really strong, really committed. Um, but we know that there are new audience members out there who haven't yet discovered the orchestra, and we know that we have to find those folks. Like that is the nature of of audiences, is that there there needs to be renewal, mm -hmm. and especially these days. And you know, and we know that coming out of of COVID um, pandemic and the shutdown, all performing arts groups. Um, you know, it's not even performing arts groups. It's everything out in the community is 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 shifting, changing. You know, movie theaters are are, mm -hmm. are 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 feeling the same thing, right? So it's so it's knowing that okay, there there has been a shift. We have to acknowledge it, and then part of that means okay, we have to go out and then find a few more people to fill some of these seats that haven't been filled. So thinking about that, thinking about how we talk to our audience, thinking about how we tell the story of the MCO and everything that we do, thinking about how we. Um, you know, for me, the way that I decide that I'm going to go see something is, you know, it's FOMO. It's feeling like I'm missing out on something cool mm -hmm. if I don't go. And so how do we, you know, so we might have to do a little bit more of that um, if we're if we're working with folks that don't uh, that don't know already. Right. Um, and then, yeah, thinking about where, you know, where are we presenting these shows and wh who are we presenting? What are we presenting? What does it look like? What does the season look like? You know, um, I think everything is kind of potentially up for grabs. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, that's working from a place where we know we have a formula that works great. We know we have great musicians. We know we have an ethos around, around you know, great repertoire, new repertoire commissions and, 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 and mixing things together in an interesting way. You know, all of those things work great and, and the audience loves them. And I, you know, I, I love that, that formula. Um, but at the same time, we know that, um, you know, everything potentially, and that's the feeling that I've gotten from the team, from, from, from Ann and the musicians is everybody's really open to that mm -hmm. exploration of what the future looks like. So, um, I'm excited about that. And I'm excited too. I think the audience is as well. You mentioned FOMO, of course, uh, we don't want people missing out. And so over the past, um, two weeks or so, uh, we've opened the classic 107 ticket window for season passes to the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. And, uh, the season gets underway tomorrow. Abadajan Pratt coming to town, all concerts taking place at the, uh, Crescent Art Center, Crescent Fort Rouge United Church. And, uh, Sean, while I got you here, um, I, I was going to get you to draw the name, but since this is 2023, we can put yep. these things online. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I've prepared here a, a sort of big giant spinning wheel. We're going to click to spin and see who our first winner is for a pair of tickets. If you want to announce this winner's name, um, Amazing. Okay. Hopefully you can see who this is. Yeah, we'll see here if I can pronounce it. Uh, and the wheel is stopping. Aha. Oh. Uh -huh. It got big there. Okay, great. Uh, well, here we go. We have a winner. It is Madeline Berezowski. Madeline, congratulations to you. And uh, we've got two more pairs of season passes to the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, so you don't miss out on any of their outstanding shows. Uh, Madeline will be in touch soon. Uh, Sean, thanks so much for joining me in the studio. Lovely to be here. Thank you. TheMCO.ca for more details on the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, their 51st concert season, or head to Classic107.com and click on the Events tab.